Hi, welcome to 3.1, Statements and Logical connect Connections. So connectives are words such as and, if, then, and or. These are words that will join two thoughts together. We have two types of ors. One's the exclusive or, one's the inclusive or. So the exclusive or means one case or the other, but not both. For example, I left my wallet at work or I left my wallet at home. It could mean both places, it can only be one place. The inclusive or means one or the other cases or both cases could occur. We're going to use the inclusive or unless otherwise stated. So in that, the inclusive or could include something like, I'm going to go to dinner or a movie, or I could do both. Doing both is okay. So simple statements are sentences conveying one idea. For example, the dog is brown. Compound statements are sentences containing two or more ideas. Like, the dog is brown and the cat is gray. Negation. It means to change a statement to the opposite of its meaning. Qualifiers such as all, none, and some. Those are called qualifiers. So in that, the form of the statement, if it says all are, its negation would be some are not. So the way to, to prove that when someone says all are blah blah blah, find something that's not. All dogs are beagles, find me a dog that's not a beagle. Doesn't mean they don't all have to be beagles. I mean, you can still have beagles, but that would disprove the all are. None are. The opposite of that would be some are. Some are, its opposite is none are. And some are not, the opposite would be all are. For example, some cats are not bad, the opposite is all cats are bad. That's a true statement. Okay, so write the negation of each statement. Some dogs are brown, so the opposite of some would be none. No dogs are brown. All cars use gasoline, so the opposite of all would be some cars do not use gasoline. Now, compound statements are statements joining two simple statements with connectives and, or, if, then, if, and only if. It's compound statements. They're not statements. This tilde symbol means not. So if P is I am going to school, not P means I am not going to school. John is not a good dancer. Since it contains a negative, we would define P to be the positive. John is a good dancer, and they represent this statement as not P. And these are conjunctions symbolized by this, looks like an upside down V, or like an A with a little crossbar. P, if the statement P is you took a test and Q you passed, P and Q means you took a test and you passed. Okay, so we're going to write this symbolically. The water uh, is cold, but it is not deep. So the water is cold, the water is deep. So we'd say P, the water is cold and, and, but is an and. It is not deep, so not Q. That would be the symbolic representation of this statement here using these definitions for P and Q. Another connective is the word or. It's the disjunctive symbol, and it has the, uh, just, sorry, disjunctive statement, it has the uh, symbol, looks like a V, it's or. So express the following symbolically with P, Tammy will go to the movies, Q, Tammy will go to dinner. So t uh, A says Tammy will go to the movies and Tammy will go to dinner. That would be P and Q. B, Tammy will go to the movies or Tammy will go to dinner. So P, Tammy will go to the movies, there's an or, so we use this V looking symbol for the or, P or Q. C, Tammy will not go to dinner or Tammy will not go to the movies. Not P, that's for not going to the dinner. Oh, sorry, dinner was Q. Not Q or not P. There you go. 
When a compound statement contains more than one connective, a comma can be used to indicate which simple statements are to be grouped together. The statements on the same side of the comma are to be grouped together within parentheses. Express the following symbolically with P being dinner includes salad, Q dinner includes soup, and R dinner includes the vegetable of the day. So dinner includes salad, comma, and soup or the vegetable of the day. So soup or the vegetable of the day are grouped together and they're part of the, the and. You're not going to get both, you get one. So you're going to get salad, that's our P, and this is grouped together, Q or R. And that's because there's a comma, so these two are going to be in the same side, and they're joined by an or. So what it means is you're going to get a salad, then you're going to get a soup or a vegetable. Part B says dinner includes salad and soup, comma, or the vegetable of the day. So salad and soup, that's P and Q, with the parenthesis because of that comma, or the vegetable of the day, that's the R. So in this case, you get both salad and soup, or you get the vegetable of the day. Okay, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit, so go ahead and pause if you need to. Example 5, express the following using words. Bill is making dinner, Amy is setting the table. So that's Bill is making dinner and not Q means Amy is not setting the table. Bill is making dinner and Amy is not setting the table. B, not P or not Q. It's not P, Bill is not making dinner. And we have an or, Amy is not setting the table. And C, we have the negation outside. So we, we state that by two, one or two ways. It is false that, or it is not the case that. Bill is making dinner, and Amy is setting the table. Now the neither nor case, be like the dog is neither big nor fast. So if P the dog is not big, Q the dog is not fast, how do we uh, express it symbolically? P and Q. Now you might say, hey, you said that these should be defined positively and we give the negative symbol. You're right. I probably should have done it that way. But the point on this one was the neither nor would be an and. That's the key I'm trying to get across here. Another type of statement is the conditional statement, the if-then statements. If P, then Q. The first part is called the antecedent. The second part is a consequent. Think of it as a consequence. For example, if you speed, then you will get a ticket. There is a consequence for that. So if-then. I'm a parent. I say to the kids, if you do blah, then blah. You know. There's a consequence to your actions. So sometimes the, words then, the word then is not used explicitly, is not stated. You might say something like, if it rains, you'll get wet. Example six. Express the following symbolically with P being Sam goes to Sand Mountain, Q, Sam rides her motorcycle. 
So A, if Sam goes to Sand Mountain, then she'll ride her motorcycle. So that'd be if P, then Q. Right there, that's it. P and Q. Next one, if Sam does not go to Sand Mountain, so we're talking about not P, if not P, then she will not ride her motorcycle, not Q. And the third one says it is false that, so that means it's a negation outside parentheses, if Sam goes to Sand Mountain, then she'll ride her motorcycle, P, then Q. So it is false that, if P, then Q. Okay, next one, express the following using words. P, Erica is, en is enrolled in Math 120. Q, Erica is a history major. K, Erica is a biology major. So this says, if Q, then not P, and R. So if Erica is a history major, Then, not P, she is not enrolled in Math 120. Comma, because it's in parentheses. And, Erica is a biology major. It's and. Erica is a biology major. The next one, we have the parentheses around the not P or R. If Q then, not P or R. So if Erica is a history major, then she is not in Math 120. Or, she is a biology major. Feel free to pause it if you'd like. I know those don't make really a lot of sense, but there you go. I'm going to go on to if and only if. If and only if, called the biconditional. It goes both directions there. If P, then Q, and if Q, then P. So if you have if P, then Q, and if Q, then P, then P, if and only if Q is what that's saying. So express the following using words. The computer is not work the computer is working the tech people did their job so it says q the tech people did their job might be jobs anyway did their job if and only if and you can uh, abbreviate that with iff the computer is working How about this one? Oh, this one looks a little more complicated. It is false that the computer is working if and only if, I'm going to do IFF, the tech people did not do their job because it's a not Q. So feel free to pause if you want to keep that. 
write it down. Dominance of connectives. Okay, the least dominant is the negation. You evaluate that first. Then conjunction or disjunction. And then conditional, then biconditional is the most dominant statement. So in this statement here, the most dominant connective, we have a not, we have a not or a negation and we have an or. So the or is the most dominant and it really means the negation of P or Q. So that negation only applies to that P. How about this one? We have if P then Q or R. Well the if then is the most dominant. So that would be if P then Q or R. It's a Q or R is a consequent. Here we have P and Q. If P and Q then R. So that's going to be still the if then is the most dominant. We have if P and Q then R, like that. Now next one we have a conditional and a biconditional. Biconditional is more dominant. So we have if P then Q, if and only if R. Next one, we have P or R, if and only if, if R then not P. So again, the biconditional is most dominant. It'd be P or R on the one side, the if and only if, then if R, then not P. So I'm putting parentheses around the, the conditional at the end and the, the disjunction at the beginning. And there's our dominant one. And the, next, the last one, if P then R, if and only if, S and P. So again, the biconditional is most dominant. We can put parentheses around there and there. If P then R, if and only if, S and P. Okay, feel free to pause it. I'm going to scroll up. Got two last examples to look at. Use the dominance of connectives to add parentheses to each statement, then identify the type of statements. Okay, so here. If P, then Q and R, I put the parentheses there, and this is a conditional. I mean, it contains the, this connective here, the conjunction, but the dominant one is the conditional. In the next one we have P and not Q, if and only if R, then P. So it has a conjunction and it has a conditional, but it has a biconditional as the most dominant. The last problem he says represent the following symbolically and insert appropriate parentheses to identify the types of statements. If the water is up, then we can go canoeing or we can go rafting. So if I say P is the water is up, Q would be we can go canoeing. And R would be, we can go rafting. And this statement would be, if P, then Q or R, because it's a biconditional statement, or sorry, conditional statement. And the last statement here, if Carlin is teaching, then Faye is in the math lab, if and only if it is not a weekend. So P, Carlin is teaching, Q, Faye is in the math lab. And R, it is a weekend. So we have if P, 
then Q, then we have an if and only if, not R. So, have parentheses there and there. This is a biconditional. Well, that'll do it for 3.1, and I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you guys later. Send me your questions. Thanks. Bye.